Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome to Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for those who are following us on Facebook. We appreciate that very much. We want to continue to build the audience any way we can. And uh, we continue to get thousands and thousands of downloads each month. So before I continue, or I should say start up the show today, I want to thank those again that Download the podcast, listen to it, give us feedback, share it. We appreciate that very much. It means a lot, and for almost eight years, we've been doing the live radio and podcast now for Real Estate Radio Live. Really, the one main goal and objective in mind since I started the show back in 2011, and that was to educate and inform the consumers anything and everything real estate that allows those consumers in to make wise decisions in and around the real estate. So. We'll continue to do that. We have great guests um, during the course of the year here in 2020. We do some shows, too, as most of you know, that are, we're having a good time with with Jack Russo and others. We also um, do some giving back segments. We are big fans of helping in the community. So if there's anyone that's listening to these podcasts, by the way, that brings to my attention that um, if you have a great cause, an organization, or someone you want to try to support, we have, um, we have people on the show on a fairly regular basis. Anybody that wants to give back to society, maybe you're trying to raise money for cancer, awareness, uh, homeless, no matter what. There's a lot of people that are in need in the community, so we do those shows as well. So if anyone has people you're affiliated with, organizations, some of you really feel like you need help, please just know that we're here to do whatever we can and do our small part as a community support as well. All right, today the show is going to be a market alert. And the reason it's market alert, here we are in just kicking off 2020, and rates are near record lows. I think it's a great time to be a buyer, so I'm going to talk a little bit about both. So I'm going to talk about interest rates, really managing your mortgage, what you could do with that, and then also why it's such an important time to be a buyer and why you might want to act sooner than later. Before we do that, the show is brought to you by Bundle Select. For those employees out there or Anyone that owns a company, runs HR, benefits, go to BundleSelect.com. That's BundleSelect.com. Find out why over 6 million employees have already signed up. Companies like Adobe and Salesforce, Visa, Boeing, I could go on and on. Over 6 million employees have already signed up for BundleSelect.com. It's an employee benefit that's changing the way employees interact with their real estate and lending. So, again, if you're an employee of a company and you want this benefit, it's no cost to your employer or you, the employee. It's an exciting benefit. Go to BundleSelect.com or take it to your HR benefits people. Let them know why over 6 million employees have signed up and companies, again, like Visa, Salesforce, Adobe, Boeing, I could go on and on, are taking advantage of this great, great employee benefit, BundleSelect.com. All right, let's talk a little bit about the rates, interest rates right now. So I'm going to go through a summary for those that are listening to the show. If you want to pass this along to someone you you think might be able to make use of this. So right now, here are some of the reasons why you should really consider refinancing. Number one, rates are near record lows. They're down in the mid mid to three range, depending on where your loan is. And now a lot of this depends on loan to value, your credit score, a few other factors. But in general, the rates are down in the mid-3%, so you really want to take advantage of this. Do what I call a mortgage review. You should really do this once a year for people you work with. And if you don't, call the team here, and we'll help you with that. That's what we do. We help. My team here helps people with real estate and mortgage and everything to do with real estate. So we help hundreds and hundreds of people each year secure them in a better rate, whether it's a refinance or a purchase. So if you have a rate that's... Really, anything over three and three quarters or four percent, you should really think about refinancing if you're going to be in that property for a while. One of the big things I see a lot right now that I want to encourage people to do, if you have a home equity line that's outstanding, 
If you have a balance, a second or a home equity line in your property, it's a great time to consolidate a first and second and secure those, consolidate those loans for a low fixed rate. Now, some people, one of their first comments or feedback when they hear this is, Joe, listen, I'd love to do that, but I have a rate of three and three quarters on my first, and I really don't want to, you know, I don't want to mess with that. Well, here's the good news. You could probably still get that same interest rate. All right, that's the good news. However, the problem is your home equity lines, most of your home equity lines are going to be probably six and a six and a half percent interest, and they're interest only, and they're adjustable interest rates. So when you combine those two, when you look at the blended rate, that is a smart thing to do financially. So again, one of the things to do right now, first and foremost, if your interest rate is 4% or more, you should really look at refinancing. Actually, if it's three and seven eighths or more, you should, especially if you get into a 30 year fix, there's a lot of people in these, these ARM programs. Secondly, if you have a home equity line, if you have debt like credit card debt, student debt, anything like that, it's a great time to consolidate that debt, wrap it all in one, into a low interest rate in the mid 3%. It's a great time to do that. Also, maybe you want to entertain looking at buying another property. Maybe you need a couple hundred thousand dollars to remodel, do an add-on, do some things that you wanted to do for your house and it'll, you know, for many, many years. It's another great time to do that. Instead of getting a home equity line, come in when the rates are this low refinance, pull the cash out, and keep your rate below 4%. Think about this. So if you listen to this podcast for the last several years, you know, let's say the rates were higher like they were a couple of years ago. Let's just say the rates were 4.5%. I wouldn't be encouraging you if the rates were 4.5% fixed on 30-year money. I would not be encouraging you to cash out, refinance, or consolidate a first and second because it wouldn't be a wise idea unless you really wanted to. And it just depends on, on your debt and what you were paying. Now, my point here is that because rates are near record lows and you could refinance and pull cash out to do that remodel, pay off your debt, do a re, you know anything you need to do with debt, the cost of money is in the mid 3% range and you're not going to be able to get money that cheap for long term. So I would secure that and make sure you do that now. The other thing is... Anyone that wants to leverage their property to buy another property, I, I tell you there's hundreds of people that I know that have been very successful in purchasing real estate and keeping it long term, and they keep leveraging the equity in the real estate. What does that mean? If you have a home that's worth a million dollars and you owe a couple hundred thousand on it or you don't owe anything on it, and you're thinking about buying a second home by the beach or maybe a vacation home or a rental property, it's a great opportunity to take some equity from your home Use that to leverage additional real estate. Now, some people might say, Joe, why would you do that? You're going to incur more debt to then get to buy another property. I would say it's a great move, and here's the reason why. I've, I've went through this before, but this is something I really want you to listen to if you haven't heard it before. The great thing about an investment in a property is you have an appreciating asset. I've said this before. So if you have a property that's worth a million dollars, right, and you leverage and you take two or three hundred thousand dollars from that property at three and a half percent interest, let's say. So your cost of money is three and a half percent interest. Here's the great part of that. You just leverage that money at low cost from an appreciating asset. So the reason I, I say that is if that home's worth a million dollars and the average appreciation over years in a certain area is six or seven percent that asset is continuing to appreciate and yet you're borrowing money from that vehicle to then invest in other opportunities. See, the great example or analogy to use is if you go buy Apple stock or IBM or Cisco or whatever, if you buy that stock for 300000 or 200000 right, what can you do with that stock? You could keep it, you could sell it, you could trade it, you could hang on to it. You could hope that it appreciates, right? Most people buy stock, invest in stock for long term so they can get the gain and the growth, right? Here's my point. If you buy $200,000 worth of Apple stock, that's $200,000 worth of Apple stock. It goes up. It goes down. You can sell it. But it doesn't appreciate. Think about this. If you put a $200,000 loan on a million-dollar appreciating asset, think about this. The appreciation on the property is at a million dollars. 
not 200. Do you follow me? $200,000 in a $1 million appreciating asset being a property. The appreciation rate is on the value of the property, not the money that you borrowed. So if you're getting a 7 or 8% return on a $1 million, that's on the property. You just leverage $200,000 from that. You can't get that anywhere else. That's a great, great opportunity. And this is the reason why I'm a fan of that within reason to leverage capital from your properties to buy other properties, if it makes sense. Now, you don't want to overextend. You don't want to go into debt where you can't afford it. You don't want to do something that you can't manage, you know, the assets and the debt. And that's not what I'm saying. If you put together a plan and do this, I've seen hundreds of people become very successful in working this program and continuing to buy more and more real estate. So look to refinance your property right now. It's a great time to do it. We're helping hundreds of people. Actually, it's been a big surge here since the first of the year. I haven't seen this kind of activity in almost a year. There's something happening out there, and what it is, I think, is people are finally realizing after Christmas is over and the holidays, they're finally realizing these rates are so low they want to take advantage of them now, and who knows where they're going to be the rest of the year. I think... We're going to have good rates for most of the year, but when I say good rates, it doesn't mean they won't go up. I do think before we get to the end of the year, we're going to have interest rates that are back over 4%. And so take advantage of them right now if you can, the fact that they're below 4%, and make some decisions. Again, this you know you could refinance on a primary residence, a second home, an investment property. Just keep in mind investment properties are more expensive to finance. Rates are a little bit higher, fees, costs, it depends on the property in many ways. But just keep in mind, these rates that I'm talking about right, right now in the mid-3%, those are for primary residents, someone with good credit scores, work history, be able to income. you got to be able to, to document your income and prove that you can afford those loans. If you can, if you meet those criteria, then you're going to get some great rates. All right, so I'm going to spend the next couple minutes talking about, now that we're trying to come out of refinance and I'm spend the next few minutes talking about the purchase market. And if you've been listening to this podcast, you know that the last six to eight months, maybe more, I think, you know, most of 2019, I was pounding the drum here as a buyer's market, and I still think it is. I do think that's going to change soon, though. And so what I'd like to do, I'd love to do, is get as many people as I can educated, give you the tools and the information to go out there and buy right now. It's a great time to buy. I can almost guarantee you the people that are buying in the first quarter of 2020, you're going to look back in the next couple of years and you're going to be glad you made that move. Now, some people will counter that because, unfortunately, they listen to the news and they watch this stuff online and they listen to the media, which, think about it, the media, in order for them to operate, in order for the media to get oxygen to operate and breathe, what do they have to do? They have to report negative news. Most of what you hear on the news is negative. Otherwise, they're not going to get your attention. They're not going to get your attention when they tell you great positive stories, unfortunately. Here's my point. Don't listen to the media. Don't listen to a lot of the garbage or some of the garbage you see online. You don't know if it's valid or not. You don't know if it's true or not. Look at the data and the details and get it from credible sources. It is a great time to buy. You might see in the media right now, here in the media, oh my gosh, homes declined 5 or 6% in Santa Clara County the last year and a half or so, whatever. It, some, in some cases it did, but that's a healthy market. <laughs> that is a healthy market. Let me tell you this. I have been doing this for over 20 plus years. I've worked with hundreds of people in buying and selling property. If you're going to take a chance or a risk, listen to this. You want to do it on the down as things are coming down the downside and not the upside. Let me explain the difference. If the market is going north, in other words, if it's, if it's going crazy like it was a couple of years ago and it kept appreciating 5% a month and the market is going upwards, right, that is when you have to be careful when you're buying. I think the better bet is if you catch it somewhere on the downside, and this goes for stocks. And investments as well. Keep in mind, if a home is worth a million dollars and it kind of flattened out and now it's starting to retract a little bit, and let's say it goes down to 975, 950, it's floating around 950, 925, 
that is the best time to buy. It's, that's a better time to buy if, unless versus a home in a million and then the next month or so it goes to 1 million 50, 1 million 75, 1.1 million. That's not the time to buy. I'm not saying you shouldn't if, if it's the time's right for you. What I'm saying is if you're speculating and if you're thinking is, is now a good time to buy, yes. You want to buy when the market's flat or declining a little bit. You don't want to buy if those people that are timing, and you really that's what you're doing, you'd rather buy now than when the market's going up. Because you don't know where that peak is, and then it could come down. The other side of the coin, if you buy in a flat market or a market that's kind of declining a little bit, and there's not going to be a huge decline, believe me, you're going to have a better chance to get a favorable purchase price in that kind of market than you will on an uptick market. Not only for the reasons I just described, but then they become more competitive. When the market is a strong seller's market, you don't, you're not going to get your offer accepted. You're, you're going to end up paying a premium for that property. You don't know what the interest rates are going to be like a year from now. You have to look at all these factors that are taking place right now. I'm seeing a surge in activity. I'm not kidding. I have seen a surge in activity in this real estate market here in the Bay Area in the last 10 days to two weeks. I know that sounds funny, but I've been doing this so long. I track this stuff. I keep an eye on this information. I study it every day. Now is a great time to go out there and get ready to sell your house and buy another house right now. I do think we'll come back later. The great thing about podcasts is when you record everything, <laughs> it's on record. So whether you're right, wrong, or indifferent, it's there and it's recorded. I do think later this year, mid year, late this year, it could be in the second or third quarter. I really do. I think we may turn more to a seller's market in the next four to six months when I'm looking at this data and this information. I really do. And you would, you, you know, some of those listening might say, well, Joe, why is that? Let me explain. Because when you look at the data, inventory is very low. The market has been flat or declining just a hair in the last year or so. So it's ripe for an uptick. It's ripe for people to jump back in and start taking activity and action on a market like this. And couple that with the low interest rates, you've got a situation where I think there's going to be a really good market this quarter and the second quarter. It could turn back into a seller's market. The reason it's important to bring that up is because if it gets back into a seller's market, then you, the buyer, are going to have to compete with higher prices. You're going to be outbid. You're going to pay for a premium. And again, you don't know where the rates are going to be. So take this information to your real estate agent. If you don't have a real estate agent, remember we have a team of people here that do loans and real estate. We also have partnerships with people who do taxes, financial planning, anything to do with real estate, taxes, financial planning. We have resources and a preferred network to help pe people with all these things. Give us a call and check in with us if we can help you. We're happy to do so. So to quickly summarize, this is a market alert. I don't do these too often. I typically do them once or twice a year depending, and I think it's important enough. Get out there, refinance, take advantage of these low interest rates, lock in something long term, especially if you're going to hold on to that property for a while. You're going to be happy that you're saving hundreds if not thousand dollars each year on those rates and you could just put that aside. Imagine locking in your interest rate for mid threes and you're just done with it. One less thing you have to worry about. Take care of that. Refinance, consolidate debt, pay off a second, combine the two. It's a great time to do that. Also buyers, get out there. If you need an analysis, if you want to run some numbers, you want to look at anything, let's take a look at that. Lastly, I want to bring up, if you're concerned, if you're a seller and you're concerned, like, gee, I don't know, I'm concerned about putting my house on the market because I have to sell my house before you buy. That's not true. Do yourself a favor. Listen to this show or anybody else that educates you on how you could get strategic and creative about financing. I can't tell you how many people are helping. I'm helping someone right now buy a home without selling their home. They never thought they could do it. We're leveraging the equity. We're using the equity in their current home to assist in their down payment on the purchase. They're buying the home that they want. They're so excited. And they could do this without selling their home. And then once they purchase their home, they're going to go back, 
put their house on the market, and then we're going to restructure this loan form. Here's the key. There are ways to do financing, get that purchase before you sell your home. Most people in my business, they don't understand this. They don't study it. They don't educate themselves at it. So most people in my business and even real estate agents, I hate to say this, they don't spend the time and energy treating it like a business. So they don't understand there's other creative ways to finance a home before you sell your home. But there is. Now, it may not be for everybody. Some people may not afford it. Don't get me wrong. It's not for everyone. But here's my point. If you have an opportunity to buy a home that you really love, and the only way you can do that is leverage something or do something creative before you sell your home, wouldn't you want that opportunity? Wouldn't you want that opportunity? And that's what I'm saying. So as we wrap things up today, remember, great rates, great market. If there's anything we could do to help, remember the two ways to reach me is uh, are two different ways, Joe at reradiolive.com or 408-838. 9060. Lastly, remember this show is brought to you by Bundle Select. If you're an employee out there and you want to take advantage of over 6 million employees right now are benefiting from real estate and lending benefits, companies like Salesforce, Visa, Adobe, Boeing, I could go on and on. If you're an employee, bring this information to your HR and your benefits people. It's bundleselect.com. If you're an HR director or benefits and someone's listening to this and you're in that capacity, also, go to BundleSelect.com and you can find out more information about why over 6 million employees and growing are taking advantage of these benefits. Thank you again for checking in today. Thank you for those that are viewing on Facebook. Thank you again for all those that download the podcast each month. Take care. Have a good day. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.